Hi there. In today's video, I'm going to focus on your knees and what they're doing when we're walking. So knee flexion and knee extension, which knee is doing which and at which times during the gait cycle. Now, I'm sure I've covered some of this buried in my other videos, but on those other videos, I'm generally focusing on the core. This is the first time I'm going to focus specifically on the knees. And then after this, I'm going to do a follow up video focusing specifically on the ankles. Now, the reason I don't normally focus on the knees and the ankles or what I call the peripheral joints is because I tend to focus more on the core. I focus on the core because the core is what we are directing directly with our mind. If I want to turn to the left, I have to tell my core to turn to the left and then I can turn to the left. I don't have to tell my knee whether to flex or to extend and we owe this to our postural reflexes that help keep us upright. So we have to at least subconsciously direct our core, but our knee actions and our ankle actions are primarily reflexive. Our lower portions of our brain and our spinal reflexes determine what our knees do. And the reason for that is kind of logical because if we had to focus on what our knees are doing with each step, we'd probably fall over. Let me back up so you can see my knees. If I was gonna do what I just did there and turn to the left, my right knee naturally flexes. If it didn't flex and instead my right knee extended, what would happen is I would fall over instantaneously. So fortunately, our body is designed in a way that is smart enough to prevent that from happening. Our postural reflexes determine what's going on with our knees and with our ankles. So we can focus primarily on directing which way we want to go with our core, which includes our abdominal muscles and our hip muscles and our back muscles. But it's still an interesting exercise to understand what the knees are doing during the gait cycle. So that's what we're going to focus on. Uh, but before we go ahead any further, make sure to click the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber, and click on the bell to get notifications for my future videos. If you haven't purchased your Walking Code ebook to follow along with my video series, go ahead and click on the link to get your ebook. Now let's get into the knees and the gait cycle. So one of the things to understand with the peripheral joint actions, including the knees and the ankles, are only one of them is going to be actively extending or flexing at a time. We're generally not going to be actively extending both knees or actively flexing both knees at the same time. And so during the gait cycle, what we're going to focus on is which knee actions are active and which knee actions are going to be passive. Let's begin with the moment the heel contacts the ground. This is going to be the loading response phase of the gait. That's between heel placement and when your forefoot hits the ground and your knee is perpendicular to the ground. With a real gait, I'll slow this down so you can see, but the loading response is going to be that portion of the gait. During the loading response portion of the gait, your forward knee is going to be actively flexing, meaning it's actively engaging the hamstring muscles to pull the body forward. And that's going to be at the moment the heel touches the ground that's going to be activated by the core movement that shifts the weight forward. Now you'll notice that my rear knee is also going to flex during this period of time. The rear knee is going to be extending during the swing through portion of the gait. And as soon as we begin to change weight, this knee is going to passively flex. It's not going to be an active flexion meaning I don't have to flex it actively in order to pull the body forward. If I were to extend it, it doesn't have any effect on the body. It's strictly a passive motion. So here's the loading response phase. Active flexion of my left knee. It's pulling the body forward. You can tell it's active because if I did something different, if I extended my knee, 
that's what's going to happen. I would topple over. So you know that knee has to be flexing. If I try to flex it more, it doesn't change my position. I can keep flexing my knee further and further, and I'm still in a perfectly normal vertical position. I extend it, and I'll topple over. If I extend my rear knee, nothing really happens. So that knee is passive. Okay, that's the first phase of the gait loading response. Now let's look at the swing through. This is where we're going to begin active extension of the standing leg knee. So when I'm stepping forward with my right leg to swing through, my left knee is going to extend as soon as my rear leg leaves the ground. So this is going to be essentially the mid swing or up to the mid swing portion of gait. I have extension active of the standing leg knee. Again, I say active because if I extended it further, you can see it's not going to change my position. If I try to flex it, it's going to topple me over. So we know it is actively extending. During this same portion of the gait, and this is an important thing to understand, my right knee or the swing leg knee is going to go from passive flexion to passive extension. So it is extending, but it's not extending because I'm trying to extend it. So I'm not locking my knee out. It's just hanging there naturally in a passively extended position compared to the passively flexed position here. So that is what's going on between the beginning of the stance phase of gait up through the end of mid stance. Now comes the final phase of gait, and this is where I'm going to rotate the core to bring the heel down. And during this part of the gait, my standing leg knee is going to continue to extend a little bit further. As I place the heel, my left knee is still extending. And you can tell this is active extension. If I extend it further, it doesn't move my body off this position. That is a natural extension. If I flex it, I'll topple over. The right knee or my swing leg knee at the same time is still going to be passively extended. You're not going to try to actively extend your knee, the swing leg knee, because that's going to lock it out. And if you hit the ground like that, you'll see what happens. You'll be prone to hyper extending your knee. Like I said, with these passive movements of your peripheral joints, we don't have to think about them so much because our reflexes take care of it. So as long as you're not trying to do some athletic activity where you're overextending for some reason, like playing football, that's when people tend to hyperextend their knees and cause an injury. If we're just walking around normally, we don't really have to think about it. The knees are going to take care of themselves, whatever we're doing. If I'm turning in a circle, walking in a straight line, I don't have to give any thought, conscious or otherwise, to what my knees are doing. So that's the beauty of the knee actions and the ankle actions. But like I said, for curiosity sake and intellectual discussion sake, we're going through what the motions are. The key really is to make sure you're moving your core correctly and the knees will take care of themselves. So those are the three phases and the three actions that the knee are, is going to be taking. All of the knee actions that are active are going to occur on the side of the standing leg. So we have active knee flexion, we have active knee extension, and then we have continued active knee extension. Now I switch to the next leg, and again, I have active knee flexion, active knee extension, continued active knee extension, and so forth. So those are all the movements of the knees that we focus on during the three phases of a normal gait cycle. And recall that the swing leg knee is going to be passive during that entire time. Do not try to actively extend or flex that swing leg knee or you're going to probably wind yourself in some problems because you can't outsmart your own postural reflexes.